Hi, this is Craig and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. If you've been following the channel, you know we've been doing a transatlantic sailing series. We started with the first episodes talking about provisioning and getting ready. And in the last episodes, we've been heading out into the big blue Atlantic Ocean to do that 3000 nautical mile crossing from the Canary Islands to St. Lucia. This episode is going to be a little different than the ones in the past and probably the ones in the future because most times when I give you the cinematic shots, I'm putting some music to it. But this episode, I want you to really hear and feel what it's like to be on the boat. The couple of days in this passage I'm going to show you are the fastest sailing we had in the whole three weeks. We get up to about 17 knots at one point. So in true vlog style, I'm going to tell you how it feels to be on this passage, but I'm also going to show you the cinematic shots with no music recorded with a stereo shotgun microphone. So if you can, listen to it with earphones and you'll feel like you're there with me. So this episode will be the sights and sounds of a transatlantic passage. Stay tuned. Good morning. So, haven't done this watch before. It's the 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. And I flip the camera around if I want, but you're not going to see anything. It is pitch dark out there. Not even a moon. A little bit of bioluminescence in the water, which is cool to see, but not as much as the first night. And uh, yeah, I'm call now. So we're going to be permanently 4 to 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So that's going to be our shift from now on. So, it should be interesting. Okay, our 4 to 8 a.m. shift is almost over, and we just temporarily, with surfing down the waves, got our speed to be 17 knots, which I've never, whoa, whoa, watch yourself, Chris. never sailed to 17 <laughs> knots. Oh, that's got to get cut out, right? No, no. Uh, my blooper reel. The funny thing is, is when the boat goes that fast, the whole boat sort of shakes. So it was weird. I thought the sails were luffing. They came out to find out, no, no, we were doing 17 knots. Dave's just about to take over for his shift. And a good night shift, though. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, good wind. Yeah. More than I think we even thought we were going to get for this time, right? We're over yeah, 20, just over 20 knots. 15, 18. There's, over 20 there's the 20 for yeah. the real wind, and we were getting some pretty high apparent winds at times when we got up to 17 knots. Nice, good times. Camera never does justice to how big some of these waves are that are following us. Though. And also I've noticed every time you pull the camera out, you can't find a really big wave. And as soon as you shut it off, some massive swell will come up. Just dwarf the boat. And we cannot get a sunrise. I was hoping for this shift, the 4 to 8 a.m. I'd be getting sunrises, but that dust and sand from the Western Sahara is always obscuring our sunrises and our sunsets. Great watch. Thank you. <laughs> we have a good watch out there, boss. Have a good watch. Hello people, so this is day three after I did my 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. shift. I took a quick nap, it's now 11ish. I probably got about an hour sleep, the rest of the time you're just listening to the boat banging, clanging. I'm getting used to it though, I'm sleeping more, so I'm feeling a little more refreshed. Third day too, first day to be quite honest, all this, we were in quite some, some big swells at the first and, and uh, you know, I felt a little green, you know, nothing too bad but uh, definitely didn't feel myself and definitely didn't get enough sleep that first day. Uh, second day, better. Today, feeling good. But if you look at the window, I know I showed you at the beginning. Some of the swells, of course, when I turn my camera, nothing big will come, but there's some pretty big swells that go right by our window here. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it, but you'll hear every once in a while in the substructure. One of these big swells, there goes a big one that just went by. You'll see the, the big swells will go underneath and wham! Right underneath where we sleep, Dan and I's cabin is in the bow on the starboard side. And of course the substructure gets slammed by a wave. And it just 
there. I don't know if you heard that. Just about knocks you out of bed. And Jim makes the bed bounce like about an inch and a half, two inches. So that's uh, hard to sleep through. But, um, eventually, I guess I'll be tired enough to do that. But yeah, we get, we're really moving along. When I was up on earlier, you're gonna hear a lot of bangs in the background. When I was up earlier, we were getting 19 knots of wind from the you know uh, port quarter. So we were really moving along with full sails. We actually started reefing because um, we were getting some apparent winds that were over 20, which means the uh, actual wind was higher than that. So we thought we'd reef in the main. I don't know if they've reefed in the Gen Genoa a little bit too. They said that would be their next step. But uh, yeah, we're cruising along. And like I say, I'll go back and show you what the, you can get a better sense of the, the swells from the back of the boat. So let's go check that out now. Okay, Dave's just finishing off his shift. He's the one who took over from us. Paul and I are back awake. Dan is downloading grip files. So you can check the uh, wind predict. And every once in a while, a really good swell comes along. Ah, one thing I gotta say about this trip, we were eating good. Cheryl and Alex are really doing an amazing job of giving us full course meals. Which, of course, as soon as you eat a full course meal, then you're tired, so... Quick little nap. Things have calmed down a little bit. The uh, waves aren't quite as big as they used to be. But every once in a while, you'll still hear the... Right above my head here is the middle of the cat, underneath the bridge deck area, and every once in a while a big wave comes through. Wham! So, I don't know if you can hear that, but... Some of them are kind of not too loud, and some are like, like a shotgun went off, so... Something you gotta get used to. Ciao for now. Well, it's the end of the third day. I'm on my last, well, yeah, last watch of today. The next watch will be 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, which is always fun. We had somewhat of a uh, sunset, which I took with my other camera over there. The haze is the usual sand haze from Africa. It was still there on the lower part, but as the sun got just above the water line, we can still sort of see a sunset before the haze obscured it. And now we're just at that time of day when Cheryl and Alex are getting our dinner prepared. And I'll be off duty at 8 p.m. So, all good. What a good day. Can't think of anything really unusual that happened today. We didn't really have any 
dolphin sightings or anything. But it's been a great sailing day. We've had strong winds. We got both sails out. We're on a broad reach. And we were at one point sailing along at 17 knots, which I saw for a split second when it came out. Most of the day we've been doing between seven and nine knots. And uh, getting about, right now, 12 knots of apparent wind. So that's pretty good. Doing seven over seven knots speed on 12 knots of wind. So, can't ask for an easier sail than this, kind of going downwind. So that's it for now. If anything else happens today, I'll let you know. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Welcome to day four of the transit. Well, I'm on my 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. shift. We're uh, probably almost three quarters of the way through it. It's still dark as hell out, so you can't really see anything. But uh, we passed a few uh, fishing boats that don't have AIS, which is kind of uh, keep you on your toes once you realize they're out there. And uh, you just gotta keep your eyes peeled for lights. That's about all you see. So they're obviously coming from the coast of Africa. They don't bother to spend the money on AIS. I guess, obviously. They're probably working on a bare bones uh, budget. So, but yeah, other than that, not too much going on. I'll keep you posted as the day goes along. Okay, morning of day four. Finally light enough on my 4 to 8 a.m. shift that I can record myself outside. Not under that very unflattering red light. So just to show you what our setup is, we are motor sailing pretty much, well, almost straight downwind. We've got our Genoa out and we have one engine going, the uh, port engine is going over there. Finally, it's light enough. It doesn't get light here until like seven o'clock. Uh, just turned light enough that we can actually see the swells coming up behind us. It's not quite windy enough to sail. Uh, it was earlier. It was pitch dark. We put the gen Genoa out with the intention of putting the jib out on the other side and going wing on wing, but wind kind of died as soon as you start taking the sails out that's when the wind will die um, but we'll motor sail for now get a little bit of speed from the Genoa being out we're doing about seven and a half knots speed over ground and eight and a half knots speed through the water so there's a bit of a current against us anyways pretty comfortable it is so much nicer going downwind I'm glad this whole uh, this whole passage should be with trade winds behind us because Yesterday when it was a lot windier, the waves were pretty big and I'm thinking, man, if we had to go close hauled into that, it would be one rodeo pounding and slamming and bamming. So, yay for downwind sailing. Talk to you later. All right, my shift is over, I had breakfast, and now that the light's up and we can organize things. We've got the wing on wing, Gib and Genoa. So only straight downwind. Doing about six knots, so that's respectable. And now I get to go have a nap. All right, it's the second watch on day four. It's been a great day. Couldn't ask for better weather than this. So uh, let me turn around and show you. It's almost sunset. Wing on wing, going pretty much straight downwind, very comfortable. The waves are, the swells aren't that big that we're getting any banging, slamming like we did earlier. So, sleeping well, eating well, having a great time. So I'll take some photos of this sunset and I'll inlay them into the video. Talk to you later. That's the end of this episode where I give you a little inside glimpse of what it was like to live on a moving sailboat. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot because it tells YouTube to suggest it to more people. There's plenty of sailing goodness in the episodes to come, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes. Also, you can hit the notification button, which will send you an email when the next episode is available. 
What you'll see in the future episodes is that this is a downwind passage, but it had a lack of wind. So first we tried a wing on wing, and then we tried to break out the spinnaker. Anything to get a little bit of speed going. It may not have been a windy passage, but it sure was a pretty one. A special thanks to the patrons that support the channel. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Anyways, there's lots to look forward to. I hope to see you in the next one. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.